morning. It is time for our next chapter of the witches and it is the final day of our flower challenge. So do you see a flower hiding in this video? If you do, you should click the link in the description below that it takes you to a Google form so you can fill that out and on Monday I can let everybody know who participated in the flower challenge and who found all the flowers. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Today's chapter is chapter 19, Mr. Jenkins and his son. Mr. Jenkins came striding up to our table with a very purposeful look on his face. Where is that grandson of yours, he, told, he said to my grandmother. He spoke rudely and looked very angry. My grandmother put on her frostiest look, but didn't answer him. My guess is that he and my son Bruno are up to some devilment, Mr. Jenkins went on. Bruno hasn't turned up for his supper, and it takes a lot to make that boy miss his food. I must admit, he has a very healthy appetite, my grandmother said. My feeling is that you're in on this as well, Mr. Jenkins said. I don't know who the devil you are, and I don't much care, but you played a nasty trick on me and my wife this afternoon. You put a dirty little mouse on the table. That makes me think all three of you are up to something. So if you know where Bruno's hiding, kindly tell me at once. That was no trick I played on you, my grandmother said. That mouse I tried to give you was your own little boy, Bruno. I was being kind to you. I was trying to restore him to the bosom of his family. You refused to take him in. What the blazes do you mean, madam, shouted Mr. Jenkins. My son isn't a mouse. His black mustache was jumping up and down like, a, like crazy as he spoke. Come on, woman, where is he? Out with it. The family at the table nearest to us had all stopped eating and were staring at Mr. Jenkins. My grandmother sat there puffing away calmly at her black cigar. I can well understand your anger, Mr. Jenkins, she said. Any other English father would be just as cross as you are. But over in Norway, where I come from, we are quite used to these sort of things happening. We have learnt to accept them as part of everyday life. You must be mad, woman, cried Mr. Jenkins. Where is Bruno? If you don't tell me at once, I shall summon the police. Bruno is a mouse, my grandmother said, calm as ever. He most certainly is not a mouse, shouted Mr. Jenkins. Oh, yes, I am, Bruno said, poking his head up out of her handbag. Mr. Jenkins leapt about three feet in the air. Hello, Dad, Bruno said. He had a silly sort of mousy grin on his face. Mr. Jenkins' mouth dropped open so wide I could see the gold fillings in his back teeth. Don't worry, Dad, Bruno went on. It's not as bad as all that, just as long as the cat doesn't get me. B Bruno, stammered Mr. Jenkins. No more school, said Bruno, grinning a, a broad and asinine mouse grin. No more homework. I shall live in the kitchen cupboard and feast on raisins and honey. But, 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 Bruno, stammered Mr. Jenkins again. How did this happen? The poor man had no wind left in his sails at all. Witches, my grandmother said. The witches did it. I can't have a mouse for a son, shrieked Mr. Jenkins. You've got one, my grandmother said. Be nice to him, Mr. Jenkins. Mrs. Jenkins will go crazy. She can't stand the things. She'll just have to get used to him, my grandmother said. I hope you don't keep a cat in the house. We do, we do, cried Mr. Jenkins. Topsy is my wife's favorite creature. Then you'll ha just have to get rid of Topsy, my grandmother said. Your son is more important than your cat. He certainly is, Bruno shouted from inside the handbag. You tell Mom she's got to get rid of Topsy before I go home. But now half the dining room was watching our little group. Knives and forks and spoons had been put down, and all over the place heads were turning around to stare at Mr. Jenkins as he stood there spluttering and shouting. They couldn't see either Bruno or me, and they were wondering what all the fuss was about. And here is an illustration of them talking about the mice at the table. By the way, my grandmother said, would you like to know who did this to him? There was a mischievous little smile on her face and I could see that she was about to get Mr. Jenkins into trouble. Who, he cried, who did it? 
That woman over there, my grandmother said, the small one in a black dress at the head of the long table. She's RSPCC, cried Mr. Jenkins. She's the chairwoman. No, she's not, my grandmother said. She's the grand high witch of all the world. You mean she did it? That skinny little woman over there? Shouted Mr. Jenkins, pointing at her with a long finger. By gad, I'll have my lawyers onto her for this. I'll make her pay through the nose. I wouldn't do anything rash, my grandmother said to him. That woman has magic powers. She might decide to turn you into something even sillier than a mouse. A cockroach, perhaps. Turn me into a cockroach, shouted Mr. Jenkins, puffing out his chest. I'd like to see her try. He swung around and started marching across the dining room toward the Grand High Witch's table. My grandmother and I watched him. Bruno had jumped up to our, on our, onto our table and was also watching, our, watching his father. Practically everyone in the dining room was watching Mr. Jenkins now. I stayed where I was, peeping out of my grandmother's handbag. I thought it might be wiser to stay put. All right, and that that is the end of our uh, of our chapter for today. Don't forget to click the link below if you'd like to participate in the flower challenge. So if you saw a flower hiding in this video today, then you can click on that Google form, fill it out, and be announced as the winner on Monday. All right, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a good one.